friends, we've got good news again. Just yesterday, Budanov said that there will be flyovers near military targets in Crimea soon. And here we can already see that the anti-aircraft defense system was actively working on the carriage bridge again. As a result, traffic has been halted. So far, no reports of hits on the bridge, but there are reports of explosions near Sevastopol and in Olenivka, which is in western Crimea. Overall, active efforts are ongoing to destroy the military assets and logistical hubs of the Russians. But that's not all. Today, according to the mayor of Mariupol's advisor, it became known that the anti-ship complex Bastion was hit in temporarily occupied Crimea. According to his words, radar stations were also damaged. There were a total of seven explosions. According to Russian telegram channels, these explosions occurred at Cape Tarhankut in the western part of the occupied peninsula. Meanwhile, on the front, the occupiers are in despair and are even retreating. But let's proceed in order. But before we continue, please give me a like, subscribe to the channel and click the bell to stay updated on all the latest news. In the Zaporizhia direction, it has been confirmed that the Ukrainian armed forces are present in the town of Robotina. If we zoom out the map a bit, it's visible that a significant part of the village has already been completely liberated and is under the Ukrainian armed forces' control. However, the village isn't officially declared as fully liberated yet because there are still Russian units on the outskirts, most likely stationed there. Therefore, we are awaiting clearance operations for these frontline sections, and in the very very, very near future, efforts will be made to fully liberate the settlement of Novopakrovka. Today, the occupiers are also bringing in reserves from the Tokmak area to attempt to counter the Ukrainian armed forces' advances. This is why there will likely be battles in this area. Meanwhile, in the Vuhledar direction, preparations are underway for an advance on Staromlinivka. According to preliminary information, tactical battles have already begun for the Zavitne Bajanya, and the occupiers are gradually withdrawing troops to a new defensive line they've constructed behind Staromlinivka. Experts are relaying this information based on reconnaissance data. However, we haven't seen these actions marked on the map yet. Similarly, the occupiers continue shelling along the entire front line, attempting to target as much the Ukrainian armed forces equipment as possible, which has been ready for the upcoming powerful offensives. As evident, other maps are also confirming the Ukrainian armed forces' successful advancement to the east of Robotine, indicating a swift Russian retreat to more advantaged positions. In the direction of Kherson, the occupiers continue to shell the entire front line. Unfortunately, peaceful residents continue to suffer as many strikes are hit in private homes. There are no changes along the front line and no offensive actions are being carried out. In the direction of Kupensk, the occupiers continue their informational efforts to claim territory. According to their claims, they have already reached Kupensk, as they circulate all videos in Telegram channels showing their supposed capture of Kupensk. However, the front line remains unchanged and there are no Russian successes. The reserves in this direction are also nearing depletion, as their offensive actions are focused solely on Sinkivka. Yet the Ukrainian armed forces successfully repel all attacks in this area. Today it seems they are attempting to boost their combat morale by spreading information about successes that in reality don't exist. In the area around Svatova, the occupiers are also only engaging in shelling, 
and as before there is no evidence of any offensive actions taking place. In the areas of Krimina and Siversk, shelling continues. Reports indicate tactical battles in the forested region, but now the side is conducting large-scale offensive operations and the situation remains unchanged. In the Bakhmut direction, the occupants continue shelling and occasionally attempt attacks on Klishivka to regain control. The Ukrainian armed forces have been unable to fully secure and push the occupiers out of the settlement. The work continues with artillery primarily at play, destroying Russian equipment and personnel. Overall, there are no reports of new offensive actions along the front line. In the Avdiivka direction, the Ukrainian armed forces managed to repel attacks on the city, while the occupiers did manage to advance about two and a half kilometers. The Ukrainian armed forces effectively counterattacked them. Currently, there are only reports of shelling in Avdiivka and its vicinity. To the south, attacks in Marinka ceased yesterday evening. Now, the occupiers are conducting shelling but haven't initiated new attacks. In Novomikhailovka, all of the Russian offensive actions were equally unsuccessful and the front line remains unchanged. As evident, the Ukrainian forces have achieved success and the occupiers have no change of breakthrough. Meanwhile, in the capital of the Russian Federation, drone attacks have resumed. During the night, drones once again targeted the Russian capital with one of them hitting the Moscow city business center. Moscow's mayor confirmed this in his telegram statement. According to him, air defense systems shot down a drone in the Mozhaisk district of the Moscow region. The second unmanned aerial vehicle hit a building under construction in the city. The mayor reported that emergency services responded to the explosion site and there were no initial reports of casualties. Russian telegram channels are sharing videos showing the drone hitting the Moscow city building, revealing a bright flash upon impact. It's reported that the attacked building suffered damage to around 10 15 floors. Additionally, it appeared that the Russians decided to retaliate and conducted a serious attack on Odessa. During this night, Russian terrorists launched a three-hour drone strike on the southern part of the Odessa region. The target was civilian infrastructure in the region. Air Defense Forces managed to destroy nine drones of the Shahed 136-135-1 type. Unfortunately, there were hits on industrial loading complexes, leading to a fire that covered an area of 700 square meters. As of 6 in the morning, the fire has been localized. Among the damages, there are reports of damage to grain storage facilities as well. No civilian casualties have been reported. Defense forces in the southern part of Ukraine indicate that the attack drone struck Odessa from the eastern coast of the Azov Sea. Additionally, it has been revealed that during his visit to Ukraine, the Minister of Energy of the United Kingdom, Grant Shops, announced that the UK will provide credit guarantees amounting to 225 million euros to strengthen Ukraine's energy security and aid in reducing its dependence on nuclear fuel from Russia. As part of the agreement, the British company Urenko will provide uranium enhancement services to the Ukrainian national company Energoatom which are crucial for nuclear fuel production. London will extend credit guarantees to Energoatom through the UK's export credit agency, UK Export Finance. The British government hopes that this move will enhance Ukraine's energy security, help end the country's reliance on nuclear services and fuel from Russia and further isolate Vladimir Putin. During his visit to Ukraine, Shabs held meetings with high-ranking Ukrainian ministers and representatives from the energy sector. He also visited a power plant that is undergoing repairs due to the damages inflicted by Russian airstrikes. According to the Department of Energy Security and Net Zero, this new credit will increase the UK's non-military financial assistance to Ukraine to nearly 6 billion euros. That's all from me. 
Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.